All right, so this is the first in a series of videos slash presentations uh, where I'm analyzing the five poems from Wilfred Owen that we have set for study in our Year 11 English Standard uh, Module B Close Study of Literature. Now, before we start, uh, so Wilfred Owen served in the First World War for the British Army um, during a stint in hospital uh, where he was diagnosed with shell shock or PTSD. Um, as part of his therapy, he began writing poetry um, under the Australian poet Siegfried Sassoon. And so all of his poems span his time in World War One. Of course, he died in 1918 before the war ended. Anthem for Doomed Youth what passing bells for these who die as cattle? Only the monstrous anger of the guns. Only the stuttering rifles' rapid rattle can patter out their hasty orisons. No mockeries now for them, no prayers nor bells, nor any voice of mourning save the choirs, the shrill, demented choirs of wailing shells, and bugles calling for them from sad shires. What candles may be held to speed them all? Not in the hands of boys, nor in their eyes, shall shine the holy glimmers of goodbyes. The pallor of girls' brows shall be their pall. Their flowers the tenderness of patient minds, and each slow dusk a drawing down of blinds. What passing bells for these who die as cattle? Only the monstrous anger of the guns. The techniques we have, first is hyperphora, and that's where a rhetorical question is immediately answered. And second is metaphor, where two things are compared directly. So in this case, soldiers being compared to cattle. The effect, our persona is asking what ceremony or funeral do these soldiers get? And specifically, he's asking for the soldiers that have died in battle. Because, of course, the ones who die once the war is over and they're back home, you know, would get a more traditional ceremony or funeral. Uh, the persona is questioning how the soldiers get mourned and how they're remembered. Only the stuttering rifles rapid rattle can patter out their hasty orisons. Orisons is another word for prayers or prayer. Techniques we have. First is alliteration which is where we have repeated consonant sounds that start of consecutive or closely grouped words. So in this case, rifles rapid rattle, the repeated R sound is the alliteration. And secondly, enjambment. Now enjambment is where there's no punctuation at the end of lines of poetry, and the idea in the first line carries into the second. All right, so because there's no punctuation mark after rattle, we have enjambment. Now, the effect is emphasizes how violent the soldiers' funerals are, right? They don't get speeches surrounded by loved ones. They don't get prayers. They don't get uh, sermons and all that sort of stuff that goes into traditional funeral ceremonies. They only get the sound of firearms firing, of weapons firing. And in this case, only the rifles uh, give out their prayers. The shrill, demented choirs of wailing shells. Techniques. First, we have personification, which is where we give inhuman things human qualities or human characteristics. So in this case, the shrill, demented choirs of wailing shells, right? Wailing shells and the fact that shells are in a choir and all that sort of thing. And secondly, auditory imagery. Now, auditory imagery is where our sound is being described. What is being heard is being described. The effect, so this further emphasizes how negative the funeral services are for soldiers who die in battle, right? Not only do they get rifles praying for them, they get shells singing for them. You know, these shrill, demented choirs. Not in the hands of boys, but in their eyes shall shine the holy glimmers of goodbyes. So techniques we have first is rhyme, eyes and goodbyes. 
And the second is biblical illusion. Now, an illusion is where the poet or the persona or the composer, the narrator, um, alludes to something outside the text. A biblical illusion is specific to the Bible. So in this case, the holy glimmers, right? Holy, that word there being the biblical illusion. The effect. So their sons, nephews, cousins, friends, etc. While they won't be able to attend the funerals, assuming, you know, because they're not rifles and shells, they will still mourn, right? They will still cry for the soldiers. The pallor of girls' brows shall be their pall, their flowers the tenderness of patient minds. Now, a pall is a white sheet or white cloth that is placed on the coffin at a funeral. And the pallor is the description of that pale color. Right, so the girls' brows, their faces are pale. Now that is the first technique there, the visual imagery. So we had auditory imagery before describing what is heard. This time we've got visual imagery describing what is seen. And secondly, we have cultural illusion with the uh, flowers being referenced and also the pole, the white sheet that goes on the coffin. Right, that's specific to Western uh, funeral traditions yeah western funeral services all that and the effect so where the quote before is talking about sons nephews cousins all that this time we've got uh the daughters wives you know mothers cousins etc so they won't be able to attend the soldiers funerals but they will still mourn right and with these two quotes together we get ultimately the soldiers who die in battle while you know, their entire funeral service is just weapons continuing to be fired and more people dying. Um, back home, it is the families who will mourn, irrespective of funeral ceremonies, right? They will still mourn that they haven't come back. And each slow dusk, a drawing down of blinds. Now, the techniques we have, the first one is euphony. Now, euphony, because we have long vowel sounds in this line, it creates a kind of closure, a kind of resolution. It, it sounds nice, plain and simple. And that's what euphony is. And symbolism, where something in a text symbolizes something other, all right? Symbolizes something outside the text or something that is not itself. In this case, the drawing down of blinds is symbolic of, you know, the end of the day, the end of the morning, M-O-U-R, the, you know, end of the ceremony, that sort of thing. So the effect, the sunset ends the day, it ends the service and brings some semblance of closure. All right, so we stated that even though the soldiers don't get the traditional ceremony or the traditional funeral that they probably deserve as, you know, being a human being, uh, they're still going to be mourned their families still care and they're going to do their own thing and at the end of the day they're still going to be remembered and they're still going to be loved 